Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Won't you stand to your feet if you're able? Hallelujah, Father God, we give you thanks and praise. Hallelujah, we bless your name. We honor you. We lift you up on high in this place this morning, God. We rejoice in you. Here we go. Rejoice in the Lord, oh. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I 
we worship you today. We thank you for another Sunday. What a beautiful day, oh God. You allowed us to come into your house to be with brothers and sisters and most of all to be able to worship you. Yes, you are great, God. You're great on our behalf. You're great as a miracle worker. You're great as the one who saved us. We celebrate your risen resurrection from the grave. We celebrate your victory over every power of darkness and evil. We thank you, oh God, because um, we don't have enough words to say how grateful we are. Oh, hallelujah. But we do see you as great. That's the only one we have today right now is great. <laughs> Greater than any need we have today greater than any concern we have, greater than any problem, any diagnosis, 
any pain, greater, 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 you're great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, in your presence and in the presence of one another, we pause to worship you and to say how grateful we are for your greatness. We thank you, Lord God, for never leaving us. Thank you for never forsaking us. Thank you that when we were dying in our sins, our trespasses and sins, you came and you rescued us and you elevated us to be with yourself. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord. May these moments we have together as a congregation and all over the world, congregations are meeting. May every service, every uh, event that's happening be meaningful in the life of the believers. That everyone leaves wherever they are worshiping, here or someplace else. They leave knowing your greatness and that you've entrusted the world to us to tell them about that. So thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Great, 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 great. He's great. I love it. I love it. The 117th Psalm. It's only two verses. So repeat after me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, you nations, oh, you nations. Extol, him, extol him, oh, you peoples, oh, you peoples. For, great is his love for great is his love toward us, toward us. And, the faithfulness of the Lord and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Endures forever. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Simple, powerful. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you. Wow, what a beautiful day. This morning we have... So much to rejoice for you who are watching online. We welcome you. We're glad you're with us. You who are in the sanctuary with us. Uh, we're glad to see you. Before you sit down, I'm going to give you a moment to greet one another. I want to say how grateful I am to see our oldest member in church today, Sister Mamie Lancaster. Yay, Mamie. And we have four members that are over 90. Uh, Mamie is the oldest. I think right behind her are Fred and Louise DeCop, and they're at home watching online, and behind them is Brother John, who is somewhere around here, okay? So, but all over 90, we are a blessed congregation. We are blessed, but especially today, Mamie hasn't been able to be with us in a while, and I'm so grateful for her. So before you go sit down, I'm going to give you a chance to also say hi to her. So God bless you. Greet one another. Say hello to one another. Hallelujah. some of those testimonies. Can you get them up here, please? Go ahead, start finding your seat. I'll give you a minute. service. We had a wonderful service last week and then also um, Good Friday. We're still, in fact, we'll show you some highlights in a minute for that. Um, but I want to hear a few testimonies this morning. I understand you have a testimony, sir. Would you like to tell us your testimony? What is it? One of our newer members. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Keep the uh, mic where we can hear it. Uh -huh. A little while back, I, they done it by down mm -hmm. four orphans. Okay. Last week, mm -hmm. four. Right, there were four, remember? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then last week... There was only one. There was only one. Now, do you remember, let's see if you pay attention, what Bishop said when he said there was only one left? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, they did a biopsy of that one. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to have cancer. They got cancer. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that was what, Monday, I think? <laughs> oh, Hallelujah! Woo! Glory to God! Yes. <laughs> I love it. I'm driving along 
on Monday and the phone rings in my car and I answer the phone. I say, yes, this is this. I said, what? What do you need? He said, pastor, it's gone. There's nothing. I mean, nothing's not there. The doctor, <laughs> Woo, praise God. Another one. Here we go. Turn him around. You probably don't know this man. His name is Shane. Mm -hmm. And he got, he got ran over by a car about, what, a month ago or something like that? Yeah. So then he went to the hospital and then he had other complications. And he'll tell you about the complications of what God did. We prayed for him last Sunday. Okay. Uh, yeah, we did. I found out that I, I had critical heart failure. Uh, only 42% of my heart is working, pumping. And uh, Patty prayed, and man, uh, I don't need heart surgery. Uh, <laughs> they, they did a, a, a procedure and ran a camera in my heart. And uh, they did uh, found out my left side is leaking really bad, but it's not leaking enough where I need a defibrillator or no surgery. Mm -hmm. And it's just because of God. Amen. Do you hear it? So he was supposed to have heart surgery. And he says she prayed and doesn't need Praise God, Brother Shane. Amen. 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 He's great. Come on. Yes, he's great. What has happened for one can happen to you. I don't know what's happening in your life. At the end of the service, Bishop's going to serve the communion, remind us of all the scriptures that, that tell us who God is and what he can do. But we've had real life testimony. So praise God. We thank you, Lord. Amen. You can be seated. If you can be seated, you're welcome to. Again, glad to have you all today. If there's anyone visiting with us, welcome to International Gospel Center, a place where all kinds of people have come and are coming and will keep coming to learn to live the Jesus life. Hallelujah. Very good. I want to remind you this first Sunday, of course, it is a communion Sunday, and we'll do that before you go home today. Uh, I want to remind you on first Sundays, it's a little different at IGC. Most of you are aware of that. We stay, we keep everyone in the service with us. We have quite a few who are traveling or out today. Rev. Saritha, I'm literally looking at your text that you're sick, and I'm believing God is healing you right, right now. Yes, I believe yes, that. You're, yes. you're grasping into that. So we have several who have commented or, or uh, talking to us and texting us. So wherever you are, if you're watching us, get your elements. In a little while, it'll be a few minutes, we have some things to do like the offering, but prepare your elements so you too can receive communion where you are. It doesn't have to be the grape juice and the, you know, go get some bread and a Coke or whatever you have. Probably not the Coke. That's not the best conduit for healing. Let's do, uh, let's do something. <laughs> but go water. Yeah, very good, Regine. Yeah, let's do something and get ready. But we, we welcome you today because it's first Sunday. I also remind you every Sunday you can find an outline for the service and all the announcements, etc. If you use the YouVersion Bible app, that is the greatest Bible. What did they say? I think I got a pastor's email on Friday. I think it was 203 million people or something around the world. So if you, huh? Over 1 billion. Over 1 billion. Okay. Who use that app? So we're in the app. So I'm just saying that's another way you can access the announcements, links to things we're doing. Also, the sermon, if there's a sermon with notes, uh, scripture, all of that right there. So you need to find it, 
you can find it now so you don't miss everything. If you know how to, don't know how to do that, who knows how to do that? You found it. Okay, I see one person. Who else? No, okay, so you see those hands? If you get in trouble, we're going to receive an offering in a minute. Go to someone and say, how do I find that? And they'll help you out, okay? Very good. Back to what I was saying. First Sunday. In a minute, I'm going to call for our, our announcements, but it's a little different. Young people stay in the service. After service, we, um, we have a, what we call a love feast, a potluck, and we eat together. And then at that point, I'm going to come and tell you all some things like where we're going to do our visits. So we have some who are sick and shut in. That's a church word, sick and shut in is a term. We have uh, Sister Remy's going to be leading the service. We'll do a nursing home service at 2 o'clock. Some of you might go there. Others may go to individual homes. We won't be going to see Mamie today, though. Praise the Lord, Sister Mamie. Hallelujah. Since she's in church. <laughs> so we have different things we do. I'll tell you about that um, as we are eating together. Uh, I want to tell you something. You who studied, uh, who know the scripture, you know that uh, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. When he wrote to the church at Corinth, he told them all kinds of cool stuff, First and Second Corinthians. And uh, he talks to him about the Lord's Supper. Bishop will bring some of those scriptures out. And then he, he, says, this, he says, I love it when we have the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper. And, and he, we have it as a family, he says. But he says, you got two issues that, that happen around the Lord's Supper. And Paul basically says, I'm not too thrilled with it. Number one, he says, some of y'all are showing up to the meal drunk. Don't do that. Now, I don't think any of you are drunk today. So praise God, 50%. The second issue, he says, some folks don't even get to eat. They go home hungry. So this is my way, pastorally, of saying, remember others when you go through the potluck line. Remember others. Does that make sense? Yes, Thank you. Praise the Lord. I, not that I need another meal, Lord knows, but I don't think I've had a, a bite to eat after church on the potluck Sunday in several months. I don't need another meal, but I'm saying look at others. Think of others. We don't have a, a monitoring system where someone's being mean and serving you. So, but just remember, it's not, this is not the Last Supper. Jesus had that. This is not it. Okay, this is just the potluck to hope your stomach over so you'll go do visitation and not growl when you're serving people communion. There's a strategy. I have a strategy, people, okay? So I just thought I would tell you that. All right. So before we go to our offering, media team, can we watch our announcements this morning, please? information is also in the Bible app. It says this week's announcements. Click here 
And also, if you don't love Bible apps or you don't like electronics, this is a bulletin. You can get a bulletin. It lists everything that you really need to know about everything we just told you, everything I'm saying uh, to you. The only thing I want to call your attention to, the Jesus Life Groups, uh, I started mine on Thursday night. I had a wonderful walk with my crew, and um, I'm the soulmates leader, S-O-L-E. Get it? Soulmates. So we're walking and exercising. However, uh, at the bottom of this list, and also in the Bible app, and also on the website, everywhere you can imagine, also on Facebook, I give you the contact information for Jesus Life Groups. So these are groups open to anybody, and to be a church member, none of that. But you need to contact the person. You can see us after church today, Bishop, myself, Deacon Isaac, Rev. Jim, we're all here. Our contacts are here because some of us have to make some, we have to make some changes, like a time adjustment. Like in Bishop's group, she won't start it. You can't join it later. That's Hebrew. Beginning Hebrew, you have to start the first day. So don't just show up. Contact your person to know, are we meeting today? Where are we meeting, uh, et cetera. But we'd love for you to be involved in that. Uh, the Jesus Life groups are fun. You get to know one another, and a lot of cool things are happening. Okay, with that in mind, let us receive, let me receive, and you, we all give our morning offering. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to thank you. That was very weak, Rev. Sarif. I miss you because you normally get excited. Uh, I want to thank you all for being faithful to your church and, um, and being sensitive always put the Lord first at your tithe the first 10% of anything that comes into your hand I like how Deacon Isaac makes a note you don't even know I see these notes Deacon Isaac yours always says church part church part he's saying I'm the church I'm giving this first to the church and that is what I use I was in the um, hmm, I was in the kitchen Friday and a, a thing from the cabinet fell on my head and I'm like oh Lord maintenance but it's just maintenance nothing demonic you don't have to say anything you know it's nothing it's just getting old and that's what you do if you're a steward hallelujah i'm not preaching today but if you're a steward god makes us stewards some of us wonder why we don't have more because we're not good stewards so if you're a steward ooh, one person said that's right if you are a steward of what god gives you not only will you maintain but you'll get more so i want to say thank you because i'm not taking a special offering for the cabinets in the kitchen. I will make a call this week to have it handled and it will come out of our tithe. So thank you. That's what, that's what the consistent giving is all about. It's maintaining. Sometimes I will have to come to you if it's unexpected. But in general, we live at the level of where we are trusting God. And when he gives us an idea like he did for the Thrive Center to do something above and beyond, we pray, I go to the elders, then I come to you all and say, here's where we want to go with this. Otherwise, we go on a daily basis, not only believing God to give through you all, but knowing the principle of seed time and harvest is when you give, you are most blessed also. It's impossible. You cannot outgive God. Principle of seed time and harvest. You cannot. You plant a seed, doesn't care how big or small it is, doesn't matter. Everything you get back is always bigger than the seed. Every so often I get this little lecture, right? Some of you are aware of it. You have never, I don't care the oldest of you, Mamie has worked with plants forever. Sitting next to her is Dr. Velma, who works in the area of horticulture. You know, never, no one has ever seen the product of the seed, a seed bigger than its product. In other words, you plant a seed and always, there's never an apple seed that's bigger than the apple. Your seed is just that. There's life in it. And then the product is greater than what you planted. So that's a principle. D Dr. Velma, am I telling the truth? Is that a yes? Okay, just checking. She works in this area, boy. Um, so I want to thank you. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you for being faithful. So when you're ready to give, you have a couple of options. Of course, we allow you to walk here. For you who would like to give, I have some offerings by mail that you all have sent in. Thank you, online audience. You can get on the seat in front of you. There is a, a card that gives you a QR code. You can give online like that. You can go to IG Center, and it says give, and you can give that way. We facilitate you. But either way, we are so grateful that, that you are, uh, I'm grateful as your pastor. I don't have to stay up in travail trying to figure out how to get the bills paid. And that's not to make fun of those who do. God knows that wouldn't work for me, though. Because I really, I really believe just follow his word. Don't be dramatic. When you need to be dramatic, be dramatic. 
but you should not have to be dramatic on a daily basis to keep the church clean and the doors open. Hello. I'm just wondering, just wondering. You all may disagree. You're allowed. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. So um, let's do this. Let's just get our offerings in our hands if you're giving online. Like, I'm going to give online. Put it in your hand if you have offering envelope. Let me see. Did I see Pastor Afalabi, evangelist, man of God? Come pray for our offering, man of God. Hallelujah. He's only home for a while from Nigeria. You see him in and out doing some wonderful things there. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for giving, and we thank you for your commandment. Mm -hmm. As we give, it will be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaking over, and running together. Yeah. Shall men give yeah. Yeah. unto us? Lord, we decree and declare, let money be given back unto us in the name of Jesus. Because we have sown money, let men go and give money unto us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm with it this week. Come on, y'all ready? My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. Awesome. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated if you would like to. Um, the other thing we do on first Sundays before we receive the communion, and we allow that, most times I like the communion to be our finale. It comes near the end, and, and the bishop will minister as, as the Lord directs her uh, with the communion. But the other thing we do on first Sundays, we celebrate one another. We celebrate people. We're family. So we're not only eating together and visiting each other, but we're celebrating um, one another. And so now the first Sunday in June, by the way, is Achievement Sunday. So we're going to be celebrating our graduates. We, I'm so proud we have graduates this year. We have young, our young people are starting to get different awards for where they are. We'll be uh, celebrating all types of achievements. 
certificates. Some of you are waiting for your certificates from the safety training, the activate class, what else, the chaplain's class. I haven't forgotten. We're going to do it all on June, the first Sunday in June to celebrate achievements. But we always uh, start out by saying we want to say happy birthday and happy anniversary as we celebrate one another. So let's start out with birthdays. Who has a birthday in the month of April? Stand up, please, so we can celebrate you. Birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Amen. She, hold on. Is she the only April birthday? We don't have anyone else in April? Who else? Oh, yes, Brother KK and Jada, right? She's not here today. Okay, so you get to get all the fame. Praise the Lord. And this was a special birthday too, right? What number was it? Lord have mercy. Whoa, 18. Well, we thank God for you, woman of God. We're proud of you. And again, on the first Sunday in June, we'll be talking about these kids heading off to college. But I want you to know we're proud of you. She works with me also as an intern. And you're a wonderful asset to this church. So we thank God for you. And we bless the one who gave you birth. Uh-huh. In Jesus' name, that you live many, many more years to proclaim that he's a great God. Amen. God bless you, sweetheart. Amen. Good. How about anniversary? Anyone get married in the month of April? Oh, yes, I remember well. Stand up if you did. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Deacon Michael Toms, who is also married to Reverend Priscilla. Minor Tom, she's out of town today. But again, I married you guys, and I want to apologize. I've done it over the years publicly because I told her that you weren't the one to marry. I was so wrong, and I love you, and you've become one of my best friends. And remember, people, don't let people have lordship in your life. I don't care what their title is. You hear from God. You're great, and I love you, and I'm so grateful for the family you all have created. You're a blessing to our church. All right? Amen. God bless you. Rep. Priscilla, wherever you are, we bless you. <laughs> You need a pastor who will tell you when they're wrong. Yeah. I've been wrong. Who was that? Dan. <laughs> a couple of times. Okay. Um, just a minute. Media team, just about two seconds. I want to watch that Holy Week recap. I do want to say, since we're celebrating one another, they will not be here on the third Sunday. It was Mission Sunday. Mm -hmm. But last week, uh, Reverend Kathy Adjutant, Dr. Velma, uh, White came in to two of our missionaries and our ministers came to celebrate with us. They were here last week for Easter and now today they got to leave in a couple of days. But ladies, we salute you. We thank God for you and your ministry. Um, to the First Nations peoples, mostly, I mean, Kathy's been all over the world. I went to Russia with her years ago and, uh, but they, the Lord, the Lord really connected them in ministry partnership and whenever they can come, they love to hang out with Mamie and and be a part of her life. And so we're just grateful for you guys. We pray for you often. And so I just want to say that because you're here. Uh, Dr. Velma, do you have any of that artwork available? That special, she has a special Cree. She's a Cree uh, Native American. She's from the Canada area. Can you let me see one? Because I want to make these available after church if she'll hang out. She's not going anywhere too quickly. Tell us about this, Doc. These are beautiful. I'm hoping to have our bookstore open soon with some of these things, but tell us about this particular piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is um, a, a mm, replica of a chief headdress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, are, um, they mimic a headdress of a chief, of any tribal plains chief, and you can make them as tiny as earrings, <laughs> but they're meant to be ornamental and uh, on it specifically, I chose, do you recognize the colors? The gospel icon colors. So with this package comes a gospel icon sticker and a bookmark, my information, and just an explanation about the chief headdress. And so just uh, wanted to find a way to get some revenue going. <laughs> No, you're a missionary. You know, I'm always behind on missionaries. So this is, uh, now she is, we, Oklahoma has a lot of Native Americans, but she is from the Cree. Uh, you're not Plains Cree. You are. You are Plains Cree. 
that tribe, allow me to say that word, it's not always, maybe that's not the right word, but you, you yeah, Plains Creek. That particular group of Native Americans in Canada, that's her home. And this represents that group, and she's very proud to be able to share this with us. Red Patty, remember when we're going to the reservation, always the gospel icon was the thing. Di Diane Bell, my God, you've used that gospel icon all over the reservations in, and here in America. And the people get it, the symbolism, etc. So I think this is brilliant. So after church, she'll be hanging around. If you'd like to purchase one of these, be a blessing to the ministry. Thank you, my dear. I love you and grateful that you right. followed my instruction. I told you to bring some because we want to be a part of that. All right, media team. I told you all, first Sunday's different, remember? It's different. So media team, let's have our Holy Week recap, please. to come. Thank you, Esther, for preparing that. And I think we'll upload that probably tomorrow or Tuesday to Facebook and Instagram and all of our platforms. It's a nice overview and you can share it. And just let people know, you know, we're happy. We're loving the Lord. He is faithful. We have wonderful testimonies and he is awesome. And we're part of that good, as Dr. T.O. used to say, that big kingdom business, right? We're part of that. I said, right? Y'all are just, come on now. Get with it. All right. So I want to tell you one more thing, and then Bishop LaDonna is going to come. Remember, um, we've celebrated one another, et cetera. I am not ministering today. Bishop is going to minister through the communion any way she wants. She knows that. Bishop, I love you. Very nice sneakers today, by the way. I love your, her new commitment to 
sneakers that are that are bougie. What do you call a bling bling sneakers? Mm -hmm. I just have one more pastoral comment to make. I feel like I should do it. Please don't be offended by it. You're getting ready to come to the Lord's table. Uh, when we were studying the book of Mark on Wednesday night, the next two Wednesdays, we're going to be re recapping the book of Mark. Most of you hung out with us for 30 days as we studied the book of Mark. When you get to chapter, about chapter 13, there is a dialogue where some of the disciples say to Jesus, you know, look at this temple. Wow, this place is great and awesome. And it was. And they start to ask him a question. They say, now, when is the, and when is the time coming? When are we getting out of here? And that whole chapter of Mark 13, Jesus talks to them, and he tells them certain things will happen. He says, you're going to have nation rise up against nation. Kingdoms will rise up against kingdoms. There's going to be all types of, paraphrase, drama that happens before the end comes. He said, you're even going to see interesting signs in these heavens and in the sky. And then he tells them, these are all signs of the times, but it's not quite yet. Watch and pray because no one really knows the exact day and time. Now, the reason I'm doing this, you know, tomorrow we are having a solar eclipse. It is going to hit Oklahoma, this area of Oklahoma. We're going to have an excellent view, if you want to call it that. I'm going to be down at Guthrie Green looking. And it's, it's a phenomenon. It's wonderful. When I, my last one that was a full one like this, I was in junior high school, I think. I was in New Jersey. And I remember we had to make boxes. Anyone remember that? Because you couldn't look directly at it. It's just phenomenal. This is all I want to say as your pastor. I want to remind you that these are, yes, signs of the times, but there's been signs of the times since Jesus said that. Don't be fooled. He even says to them, don't be deceived. Don't get dramatic. I don't think any of you would be that way, like running up anywhere to hide. or be. But I just felt like I, I should say that. Don't, um, please don't send me another article uh, explaining why we don't have to worry because by next week this time we'll be gone. Absolutely, absolutely contrary to the teachings of Jesus. When they say, his disciples say, we want to pinpoint this thing, he says, it happens again in Acts, he says, no, all of these are indicators that we're in at the end of the age. The comical part is God has existed forever. So the end of the age for him has been a little over 2,000 years. Remember, he even told the disciples in Acts, uh, you know, don't worry, this generation is not going to see death <laughs> So I come back, and all of them are dead. The next one after them are dead. Their grandchildren, their great-great-grandchildren are dead. So what does that teach us? God doesn't know how to tell time? No, he exists differently than we do. <laughs> Prophetic dialogue, I, maybe I'll talk about that a little bit on Wednesday night when we go through uh, Mark again. Prophetic dialogue is a little bit different than just the way you and I speak, and we, have to, we realize that. So, yes, we see it, we look, and we are fascinated, if you're like me, about God's awesomeness, his bigness, how he said these things would happen. But we also realize that he said what you do when you see these things is you go and you watch and you pray. And you do what I ask you to do, which is to tell people the gospel. So if you want to get excited about anything, eclipse or anything else that's a, a dramatic, like a blood moon or something, be excited, but use it as a tool to remind you we're supposed to be about our father's business. Not to scare people, not to be unkind, or again, not to sell everything and run to whatever, uh, hide. It's, it's the reminder that we're to be about our father's business, that we're to be continuing to share the gospel. That is what, I use the Mark passage because we just read it, but you can find that throughout the New Testament when it happens. I just felt like I wanted to say that, and um, I love being a pastor. And so I just thought that would be kind of something that you needed to grasp. Some of you may, maybe all of you didn't need it, but somebody needed to hear that. And I'll be so happy tomorrow when you're not sending me all these articles. I had so many this week. I'm just ready to scream, but I can't turn off my phone. So I just wanted to let you all know. I am quite aware of proper biblical exegesis. I can hold my own with any of those you send to me. Um, so just be aware. These are signs of the times. Yes, but they've been signs of the times for more than 2,000 years. And no one knows the day or the time. What's been entrusted to us is to spread the gospel. Amen? All right, help me receive Bishop LaDonna. You have your own mic, yeah. Okay, very good, Bishop. Yay. 
Don't you love our pastor? Everybody needs a pastor. And we have the best. I said, we have the best. <laughs> now, trust me, I've been around, shall I add, a long time? Not as long as you, Sister Mamie, but I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Thank you for running ahead and showing us that everything is just fine. <laughs> there you go. Today is first Sunday, and I'm excited. I'm going, to, I'm going to share some comments with you for the purpose of creating a context for us to share around the Lord's table, share communion together. We do this every first Sunday. We've already received, we've heard two wonderful testimonies that are proof that what we celebrate really happened and was effective and makes a difference and makes a miraculous difference in our lives when we choose to believe it and act on it. I was just looking across this congregation, how many, you see on First Sunday we visit those that are, as Pastor refers to, sick and shut in, and those that are not able to be with us. And I'm looking over here when we went to visit Brother Bob, when he, after a, a terrible time, he was in rehab, came to visit him. Uh, I remember when we came and we were praying for you guys that were in, in, in really dire need of physical miracles. I'm looking here, Sister Janie on the camera, we're visiting her in the hospital after heart issues. Look, you're here. You're not a shot in today. You're here. They went, Sister D, after her accident, shut out a long time. We came, served communion. Bless her. She's here today. <laughs> Sister Elizabeth, we visited her, but she didn't miss anything. She got here already last Sunday. <laughs> The devil couldn't keep her down long. I'm looking at Sister Mamie. We visit her every first Sunday. She's here today. I'm showing you that the wonders of God are not once in a while happenstance. They're consistent. We can depend on them. And I'm not even going to tell and call your names how many of you have been sick. You've had this or that or flu or COVID or cold or sore throat or infirmity or bones or knees, Brother Steve, or <laughs> shoulders, Bishop. What? I'm not even talking about all those that we've prayed, trusted the Lord, and we're here celebrating his greatness and his faithfulness. I'm encouraging you, we're part, we, we are part of a miracle church. We believe in miracles. We see miracles. We never turn aside from our faith in the miracle-working God, what he does for us through Christ. So I'm reminding you, Look around every time you gather, you see one another, and remember everyone that's a miracle. We're all miracles. We're all miracles. We're all miracles. We're miracles. We're miracles. We're miracles. The fact that we can even be here with faith in our hearts, that's a miracle. We've been redeemed. We've been filled with the Holy Spirit. We're happy. We have purpose. We're not depressed. Our stomachs aren't empty. Heavenly Father, we are in this place together as your people. And these of your children that are with us online, you see us all as one. And we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your continual demonstration of your love, of your power, of your presence. I thank you that every miracle that we know of is just the proof that when the enemy comes and challenges your people in any way, you are still the miracle worker because you are the same today as you were yesterday and you'll be the same tomorrow and we commit our faith to you. 
Now, Father, as we consider your great sacrifice, I'm asking you, open our eyes that we'll see. Open our hearts, our understanding. May this not be just a ho-hum communion service, but may we see you. And may our faith rise to the resurrection new life that is ours because of you. We love you and honor you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. God bless you. I want to read a passage of scripture because this is the first Sunday since Resurrection Sunday. And you know, just like we don't like to just burst upon Easter, we've had a Good Friday, we had a Palm Sunday. We don't like to burst upon Christmas, we have Advent. We, we revel in these things that sensitize us to God's work in our lives, his determination to work within humanity to restore his plan. So just like we don't rush into things, we don't want to exit out too quickly. We're still talking about Christ, what he's done, and these events that are the pivotal events, the facts around which our faith is secure. Did you hear me? Our faith is secure. So I'm reading, um, and it's in your YouVersion app if you want to read along with me. I'm reading from the New King James, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we've testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did, whom he did not raise up, if in fact the dead be not raised. And if the dead are not raised, then Christ is not risen. Don't you love the Apostle Paul? I mean, he can lace it up. He can do apologetics better than anyone we know. <laughs> and then I'm picking it up at verse 16. I've read that. If, if the, no, no. If the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, you're still in your sins. Then also, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we hope in Christ, we are of all people the most pitiable. Now let me just say here, because of that word, you know at IGC, we include women in the scripture where the English language emphasizes men for women and men. So you'll notice when we read the scripture, when we refer to the scripture, if we know it means everybody, we say so. We can say men and women, we can say everybody, we can say all people, we can say humanity. We have lots of options besides just men that leaves the women out. It leaves the children out. So I just point that out. We're, all, of all people, most pitiable if we only have hope in Christ in this life. Verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Corey and I attended a family funeral just yesterday. A wonderful Christian cousin. He was in his high 80s. And I just, I, I'm just f fresh in this awareness of the hope that we have because Christ rose from the dead. I remember standing around my father's bed when he was just breathing his lasts, standing there with one of my grandsons and his family. And I was talking to the grandson, and I was saying, you know, when you see a loved one step through that veil, we remember that we have an eternal hope. Yeah. 
an eternal hope. That matters to us. We are in this life, we live in hope, but in this life we know things don't end in the grave because there is life that goes on. Somebody say hallelujah. For since, verse 21, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. And my final verse, verse 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is a powerful scripture. From the words of the Apostle Paul speaking to the believers after Christ had raised from the dead, we remember the importance of all that Jesus came and that we've been celebrating over these recent weeks. Now, just before we take communion, I want to remind you of three responses that we should have concerning these events. Number one, we remember... We remember, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus and what it means. We were guilty of sin. We were living under the sentence of spiritual death. The Bible says the soul that sins will die. We were all guilty of that punishment. But Jesus took on himself our sin. Say, my sin. my sin. And our punishment. He took it all. He took the sin and the punishment. Think about that. In his suffering, he paid the price that was required to buy us back from Satan, who had stolen us because of our, the choice of Adam and Eve. The scripture says, the Apostle Paul says that Satan seized the sovereignty. The same authority and sovereignty, the rulership that God had given to his human creation to rule in his name as co-regents in this world. When they chose to turn away, they doubted God's integrity. They turned away thinking they were turning into wonderful freedom. I can make my own decision. I'll know what's right. I'll know what's wrong. I'll become like God. Wow. That's what they thought. As soon as they bought into that lie and they turned, the enemy seized the sovereignty and he became the ruler. He became the authority. He is the one who has gained all of that authority that God gave to Adam and Eve. And this gives us a wonderful picture not only of the condition of humanity, but of the rule and the cruelty and the death and the suffering that has been always the enemy's package. Sickness. Depression, sadness, infirmity, poverty, broken relationships, lack of self-esteem, fear, insecurity. We are plagued. Humanity is plagued with all of that. If it weren't for the enemy and what Adam and Eve brought into the human family, we wouldn't need any counselors and we wouldn't need any preachers. We wouldn't need any doctors. We wouldn't need any law enforcement. Are you hearing me? We wouldn't need civil governments. We wouldn't need everything that we have in this earthly structure to try to bring hope and correction and some semblance of order within this chaotic family ruled by Satan. I want you to see what Christ accomplished so that we'll remember him. He satisfied, I love this, he satisfied the demands of the law. Now, I'm not going into that, but if you reflect on the sacrificial system that was instituted by Moses, all of the complex, read Leviticus, and your head will spin. 
and you'll try to make a list of all the things you're supposed to do to keep yourself right with God and you'll miss it and you'll forget and you'll do the wrong thing and you'll get in trouble and then you'll have to do it twice and then you'll really get in trouble and you might die. The demands of the law. Christ satisfied it all. He brought the blood. He was the innocent, suffering for the guilty. He took his blood. He presented it as if to the holy place. The veil in the temple was rent. He brought his blood into that holy place in the presence of God, and he presented it to be the atonement for the sins of the whole world once and for all. He satisfied the demands of the law. But he also satisfied the demands of justice. Think about this. It was because of Adam and Eve's choice that Satan became the ruler. He had no power over them. Their choice was their power. When they chose wrongly, they lost what they had. So the enemy owns people who don't know Christ legally. He owns them. He, he didn't steal them. They gave themselves up to him. Think about this. So what was God's response? If I were God, you know, I would just smack that boy back to hell and close the door. That's not what God did. He had a process that was just. In order, that's why we, we emphasize redemption in this church, because that word means to buy back. Jesus came himself, fulfilling all the demands of the law, and then fulfilling the demands of justice. He came to Satan in head-to-head -head combat at the cross. And he was victorious at the cross. He was victorious through his resurrection. He settled the score. He won the battle. He is victorious, holding all the keys to death, hell, and the grave. So he didn't just destroy Satan. He came and satisfied. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. He came. The innocent must die for the guilty. He came. He presented himself as our substitute, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and he comes and buys us back. The scripture says we were not purchased with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We were bought back from the enemy. It is settled. It is legal. It is final. The enemy has no more authority. We just must make another decision. Just as Adam and Eve made a decision, Christ did everything that was necessary, and then it's up to us. We have to make the decision to turn away from the old life and turn to Jesus and receive him by faith and receive his life and live for him, allowing his purpose to be fulfilled through us. Isn't that beautiful? It's so simple, and it's so powerful. Don't ever be confused about the plan of salvation. We can gloss it over with one scripture. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Yeah, that's the bottom line. But we need to understand how this happened. Why did it happen? What was the drama of it? The perfection of it? The justice in it? The love in it? The fulfillment in it? In it. It's just it's just amazing. And I know Pastor will we'll keep dealing with this as we're reminding ourselves what Jesus accomplished. So number one, we remember what Jesus and his sacrifice did for us. Number two, we rejoice in his glorious resurrection. You can't think about the cross without thinking about the resurrection. 
It's so hard for me. And I loved the way our young people presented Good Friday because they worked in the resurrection. You just can't have the cross without the victory of Christ. But we don't want to gloss over the cross because it was such a, a horrendous event. We have to understand it, but it didn't end there. It didn't end there. Three days. Three days is nothing. Three blinks. That was what the scripture had said. And after three days, that's what the Bible says. After three days, he'll rise. How many times did Jesus? Three times in Mark, he told his disciples, I'm going to be handed over. I'm going to be killed, but I'm going to rise. What did the Apostle Paul say? 1 Corinthians 15. I'm talking about the gospel that says that Jesus, he died according to the scripture. He was buried according to the scripture. He rose from the dead according to the scripture. That is the power of the prophetic word of God. It is fulfilled. This last Bible study on Wednesday Pastor Cheyenne was taking us through a certain part of the Mark readings. And we were looking at so many of the Old Testament passages that were about the resurrection. See, we know a lot that are about the cross. But there are so many about the resurrection. It is just powerful. One of them was Psalm 16, verse 10. You will not leave my soul in Sheol. In the dark underworld. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. It takes more than three days for corruption to set in. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. In his resurrection, he gained victory over death. Death should never make us tremble in fear. Death means nothing to us. Death, death is just a little temporary thing when the body stops breathing and we're done with this temple and then we're, we continue to live. Our, we continue to live. We are eternal beings. We had a beginning, but we don't have an end. We will either spend our end in the presence of God or we'll give our, send, spend our end without his presence. That's hell. That's torment. I'm looking at you in some of your worst situations. Even when you're not serving God and things are crashing in around you, there's still, I can always pray. I can always reach out. I can always call someone. I can ask for prayer. Once you stop breathing, that door is closed. You understand? That's hell. Being away from the presence of God. But through Christ's resurrection, he gained the victory over death, over hell. There's no hell that can reach up and grab you. There's no grave that can just walk by and swallow you up. There's no circumstance of life that will just engulf you and destroy you. No, Jesus has the victory because he rose from the dead. He suffered it all. He experienced it all. He did it all so that we can be here this morning and revel in this wonder that is our salvation through Jesus Christ. Mm. He defeated the enemy. I wish every Christian believed that. I'm in Christian contexts a lot. And it's a shame how many people are, are well, just afraid of the devil. And they give him the credit for every little thing. They really think he's somebody powerful. Isn't that sad? They just, they just live with a tremble. And the more spiritual these Christians are, the more they emphasize the devil. You know what I'm talking about. If they're just carnal Christians, they're not blaming the devil for everything. But they get really spiritual, and then, just like my father said, if he can't keep you from doing, the devil can't keep you from doing something, he'll jump in and help you do it. 
So if he can't keep you <laughs> from being spiritual, <laughs> then he'll jump in and he'll become the star of your spiritual mind and circumstance. Watch out for him. He's tricky. And he has no power. He's been dethroned, defeated. He has no feet. He has no teeth. He has no authority. He has no truth. He has no hope. He has no fake good. All he has is a lie. Everything out of his mouth is a lie. Jesus, through his resurrection, he defeated the enemy. He defeated Satan, all of the spiritual dark forces. Oh, I listen, I, oh, I, I've been troubled from the time I was a child to be with missionaries in certain countries. And the missionaries, I'm not, this is not to, to, what's a good word, to say anything negative about missionaries. Please, there's, there's all kinds. And... There's all kinds of attitudes among them. But what bothered me as a child was we'd sit around a table and they were telling story after story after story of the works of the witch doctor. And their eyes would get big and they would tell these stories as though, look at what all, ooh. And just as a little girl, I was sitting there biting my nails wanting to say something, and of course, Children were seen and not heard in that day. <laughs> and, and, and so I'm thinking inside, I'm just going through this, this, this revolution, this, this of Jesus rose from the dead. He has all authority. He has all power. There is no demon that can touch any of God's plan. He has been defeated. He has been defeated. He has been defeated. There's nothing good in him. We don't give him any credit. We don't testify of his lies and his tricks. We glorify the one who has all power. I said, Jesus, through his resurrection, defeated Satan, all of his de demons, and every dark force. Don't tell me you say things in the night that float around. Don't tell me those things. I'm not interested. You need to learn to stand up and say, devil, shut up. Jesus, through his resurrection, he inaugurated his kingdom. And that changes everything. His kingdom is established. We are the kingdom authority. We are the ones. Just as Jesus, before his sacrifice, demonstrated kingdom living, after his resurrection, we demonstrate kingdom living. Uh, that'll take a little more study, okay. Okay. We'll go there in more detail later. So let me just give you number three. First, we remember, we rejoice, and I needed an R word, the best I could come up with. We report the good news. <laughs> That's part of it. We don't just know about it. Again, if the enemy can't keep us from doing something, he'll jump in and help us. If he can't keep us from getting saved... Even knowing these wonderful truths, if he can't keep us ignorant, then he'll keep us silent. Keep us self-centered. Keep us satisfied with our relationship with Jesus. We just float around in this glorified, uh, isn't life wonderful? Jesus is my friend. He's always with me. I can talk to him anytime. I'm saved. When, when the enemy comes, the Lord raises a banner. Oh, come on. What happened after Christ's resurrection? Every appearance, he was saying, go and tell, go and tell, go and tell, go and tell, go and tell. This isn't just for you. This is to empower you to carry this message of the crucified and risen Savior to the world. So we not only remember and rejoice, that would be the Christian tradition. We remember at the communion table, we rejoice on Easter, and the rest of the time we just live. 
No. The rest of the time, we're reporters. We're rep every one we can find in every occasion, in every conversation, in every setting, we're making it clear. I want to tell you about. I want to tell you about. There's the most amazing thing. It's an amazing story, and it's true. Let me tell you about. God loves people so much. He actually came. The man was Jesus. You've heard about him. I'm telling you that he's done great things for you. So your life can be new. You can have relief. You can have hope. You can be healed. You can have provision. You can have a clean heart. Jesus died for you, but he rose. He rose. He rose. Come on, let's have coffee, and let's talk about what that means, that he rose. If he rose, that must be for something. Well, it's all about you. Let's talk about it. I'm telling you, we are the rememberers. We're the rejoicers, and we're the reporters. You got really happy when I talked about the devil being defeated. <laughs> this is the one that should make us the most happy. Because we're, we're, we're Holy Ghost filled people. Right? We're Pentecostal church. That means we believe that the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives is just like it was in the book of Acts. That's what we believe. That means that now we're changed. And we've got a perspective, and we understand the scripture, and we can tell people in a way that's convincing. And every day, whether it's publicly or house to house, we are announcing this amazing good news. That's who we are. We get busy with lots of things, but this is our priority. In the midst of our busyness, let's keep the message going out. Keep the report. Keep repenting, printing the report. New editions every day. Keep it out there. Keep it out there. Mm. Are you ready to come around the table of the Lord? Can we do this with a fresh insight? And I would hope fresh commitment. We remember the right things. We rejoice in the eternal things, and we report Christ and his work. Heavenly Father, as we come around your table, we do so with great humility and great gratitude. Thank you. Our words seem so shallow. But in reflecting on what you've done for us and your greatness, we can say all we have to give you is our lives. We give you our lives through faith. We give you our lives through confidence, through service, through every way that we can. We are responding to this great plan of salvation. I thank you, Father, that you love your people and that you're trusting us to live this kingdom life make a difference in our world. Thank you, Jesus. Those who are going to serve with me, would you just come? Through Christ's suffering, Jesus removed our disease and our pain. And he has provided our health and soundness for our physical bodies. Through his shed blood, he's removed our guilt, all the condemnation that we deserved, and he's provided forgiveness for our sins. And he's allowed us to stand before God, innocent and whole. The Lord Jesus gave us two emblems. They're symbols that we use in remembering what he did for us at the cross. One scripture includes both that I want to read in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion or the fellowship of the blood of Christ? And the bread which we break, is it not the communion or the fellowship of the body of Christ? I talked to you last week about identifying with Christ's death, his burial, his resurrection, 
That's what Paul is talking about. It's a communion with what Christ experienced so that we have fellowship with it and we're changed thereby. So let me give you just a moment and take your elements and um, open it up just a bit so that you won't be hindered when we're ready to partake together. Keep your hearts in an attitude of remembering and gratitude. Jesus, Jesus, my Redeemer, there's no greater love than what you've given me. Hallelujah, I'm forgiven and I'll never be chained again because the very same power that raised Christ from the dead is alive in me and the very we will eat together represents Christ's body. It was broken for us so that we can be whole in him. The scripture says in Isaiah, certainly, say certainly. He has borne our sickness and carried our pain. And by his stripes, or because he suffered, we're healed. Our healing is accomplished. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had broken it, he gave thanks, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this and remember me. Allow me to read the scriptures concerning the wine, and then we'll partake together. The wine, or the juice, represents the bloody blood of Christ, and it was shed for us. Further in 1 Corinthians 11, in the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. So do this as often as you drink it, and remember me. I love Ephesians 1 7. 
in him we have redemption. We've been bought back through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. In 1 John 1, 7, we've talked about the miracle that makes us one in Christ. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So I want you to take the bread, hold it before the Lord, and say, I hold this bread before you, Lord. As a reminder of your body broken from me. Thank you for bearing all of my sin. Excuse me, stop, stop, stop. Thank you for bearing all my disease and pain. I number myself among the healed. My body is the temple of God. It is not the house of disease. So as I eat, I remember you. Because of your stripes and your suffering, I'm healed today. Let's eat together. You who are with us online, you've said it, you have your element. If you're sick today, receive your healing. Appropriate what Jesus has done for you and what the scripture is teaching us is ours through Christ. Now I want you to take the cup. What a great price was paid for this great salvation. Let's drink together. And say right after me, I hold this cup before you, Lord. As a reminder of your blood shed for me. Thank you for paying the price for my sin. As I have drank this cup, I receive your full salvation. I receive a new life. Because you shed your blood, I am free. Thank you, Jesus. You are my Savior. Hallelujah. Come on. Say hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yes, drink, drink, drink. Just symbols. No power in these elements. But oh, what they remind us of. Changes everything. Everything. Let's rejoice. Would you just stand to your feet? And I want you to say after me, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for being buried for me. Thank you for rising for me. Thank you for rising for me. Thank you for buying me back. Thank you for buying me back. Thank you for giving me a new life. Thank you for giving me a new life. Thank you for giving me an assignment. Thank you for giving me an assignment. That I can report your good news to the world. This is my commitment. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just rejoice. Oh, freedom. Hey, freedom.
that a message like this, we've taken, we've partaken of the Lord's table. Now, I can make a call and pray for you, but it's a better choice that you appropriate the message. If there's guilt or sin or habits or things that you know are not right, this is your time to claim freedom. As we sing this, I'm free, I'm free. It's not a big drama, it's, it's a choice. You decide to take for yourself this gift of freedom through Christ. For your healing, if you're suffering today, we remember you, Brother Bob, and this next procedure you're going to experience. We're standing with you for wholeness, for restoration. Others of you that are dealing with things, we're aware, we stand with you. Now is your time as we sing the bondage of pain, the bondage of sickness, the bondage of infirmity. We're going to be free because Christ is free. Freedom, freedom. Wonderful. Thank you, Lord. I'm looking at our online audience and their comments. God bless you guys. We're with you. Amen.
Are you glad you came to church yes. today? Yeah. So I'm with Bishop now. Make application. That's all you have to do. Make application today and let God keep talking to you. Uh, we're going to pray. I'm going to not just dismiss you, but bless your food. And then you heard what I said earlier. Um, let's do it. And all of us have brought something. Go get your thing. Get it ready. And then in about 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, um, I'll come out and update you on our visitation, where we're going, when we're going, who's going. You, anyone can go. I just want to organize a little bit. So praise God. Bishop and I will be on at 630 tonight on the WIN Facebook page. Women all over the world in ministry are join us once uh, first Sunday, every uh, first Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Tonight we're going through part four, episode four of Dr. Daisy's Life, the video series we have launched. So if you're back from visitation, I'll be done by then. Join us online at 6.30. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Lord, thank you. It's been great today that the moments we spent together from the time we started singing to hearing the testimonies, to being able to see people we haven't seen in a while, to receiving the communion and understanding what you accomplished for us. Our hearts are soaring. So, Lord, may we be obedient to your word, not only as we receive our food is blessed, but as we go out into our community, to these nursing homes, to these houses, to these hospitals, wherever we go today, Lord, thank you that we bring that good news that you died and you rose again, and we're the carriers of it. And so we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Anyone that has some food, go get it ready. We'll see you in a minute. No other name that's higher. No other name that's stronger. No other name forever. No other name so precious.